Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be doing my February TBR. So this is coming before my January wrap up because I never found time to do it and I'm still going to be doing my January wrap up. I just want to do my February one first because this will be more timely. I read nine books in February and took part in three readathons. I took part in the Blackathon, the Black Loveathon, which I also helped host, and the Blacklit Challenge. And I completed all the challenges for the Blackathon and I completed most of the challenges for the other two readathons. I will have timestamps for each individual book that I talk about in this video in the description box down below, and I will also have affiliate links in case you want to buy any of the books. I think that's it. Now I'm just gonna get into the books that I'm talking about. I did read one thing that wasn't by a black author, but everything else was by a black author, and so I'll do the thing that wasn't by a black author first just to get it out of the way, but everything else will be in chronological order in the order that I read them during the month. First, let's talk about Shadow of the Batgirl by Sarah Kun and Nicole Gu. This is a graphic novel, comic, something that is an introduction to the story of Cassandra Kane. This is a little different from, I think, her original introduction story. It's like a reboot, I think, or it might be a one shot. I'm not 100% sure. But Cassandra Kane, if you don't know, is a Batgirl. There's like multiple Batgirls. She is the daughter of some evil people and they raise her to become the best assassin. And to do that, they raise her without any language and she only understands body language. And so in the course of her being like the greatest assassin, she realizes what she's doing and she's like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. So she runs away from her father in order to like become a better person and integrate herself into like regular people life. This was a fun story. I enjoyed reading it. I read it in less than an hour. And I think it's a good introduction story. If you don't know about Cassandra Kane, I really don't know a lot about her, just like random things I've heard here or there when I was more into comic books. So I think this was good for me. I felt like I had a good understanding of her character. I just thought it was fun to read. It had a little cute romance in there and I enjoyed it. Fake ID by Lamar Giles. For this, like the synopsis, I'm just gonna read the like Goodreads synopsis because I think it does a good job. Nick Pearson is hiding in plain sight. My name isn't really Nick Pearson. I shouldn't tell you where I'm from or why my family moved to Stepton, Virginia. I shouldn't tell you who I really am or my hair, eye, and my skin color. And I definitely shouldn't tell you about my friend Eli Cruz and the major conspiracy he was about to uncover when he died, right after I moved to town. About how I had to choose between solving his murder with his hot sister Rhea and staying low like the program has taught me. About how moving to Stepton changed my life forever. But I'm going to. That's the synopsis. I feel like if that doesn't get you interested, I don't know what will. That got me interested. Please excuse the sounds of my cat using his litter box. This is a murder mystery kind of thing. And I had a lot of fun reading it. It's just like, I don't know, kind of a good old fashioned mystery. Not like Nancy Drew-ish, but it has like that kind of feeling to me. The twist at the end was surprising to me. I didn't guess it at all. I thought it was like a good kind of surprising. Like it laid the groundwork for it. I'm just not that smart to figure things out. But there was just one part that I couldn't suspend my disbelief for and it's a spoiler so I won't say it here, but if you check out my Goodreads review, I do have the spoiler in there under a tag. So that part was the one part that I really was annoyed about, but everything else I really enjoyed and I just enjoyed reading it. I thought it was a different kind of twist because I haven't read anything like this and I gave it three and a half stars. Next I read Saving Savannah by Tanya Bolden. This is about a girl named Savannah who is the daughter of an upper class, upper middle class African American family and they're living in Washington DC. It's about Savannah learning about like what she can do based on the position she's in to like help black people in America, help with social change and that's the majority of the story and we get to see a little bit about how that subsect of America lived and it's set in the early 1900s. I don't think I mentioned that. This has a trigger warning for racially motivated violence and assault. I don't know if that's really a trigger warning, but I thought I should mention it because I would not have guessed that it was in here based on that synopsis. And I also felt like the synopsis that Goodreads gives you doesn't prepare you, I guess. Uh, so I did want to put that out there. Oh, I also received this book from Neck Alley in exchange for an honest review, and that synopsis I don't think prepared me either. But yeah, this book takes place right before and during, and I guess right after, Red Summer in Washington, D.C., which I honestly had not heard about. The Red Summer was a time in, I think, 1919, is what my research said, when there were a lot of white supremacist killings and like a lot of white supremacist violence towards black people 
which resulted in like a concentrated large amount of deaths. And so we see like a riot in the book and I did not expect that. I thought it was well done, but I just wanted to let people know about that. And I appreciated that it was in here because like I said, I didn't know about it. That's not something that's in textbooks or it wasn't in any of my textbooks. So I appreciated getting that historical knowledge. And I also appreciated seeing a story about wealthier black people in America during this time because we don't see a lot of that or really any of that. We mostly see the story of just people born in poverty and living in poverty, which is important that we recognize that a lot of black people were living under those conditions, but not everyone was. And so I just like to see all of that being shown. Like we don't always need to be shown being poor and downtrodden. Like we can be shown being successful. And I appreciated how it was done in the lens of social change because the main character does want to help those not as fortunate as her and she's trying to figure out how she can do that. I will say the writing style felt odd to me. I can't really describe it, but something about it made it hard to read. It, it felt almost like it was written in verse, but not quite. So it just felt really odd and it made it hard for me to get into the story, especially at the beginning. It does lessen as it goes on, like the writing becomes less like that. And I guess because the story needs to give more descriptions of things, so I guess it loses that quality, which makes it easier to read. That part I didn't love. And also this is another story that has basically no plot. Like it just follows Savannah over the course of three or four months. Like there's no one central plot point that we're building up towards or anything. So if that's what, something you don't like, I would steer away from this, especially because for stories like that, I feel like the main character needs to be really strong. I don't really feel that she was here. I did feel a little bit like this was a vehicle for us to get like some historical information. And the main character was like the strongest in the story but the side characters really did feel kind of flat to me, um, especially her best friend who's mentioned in the story. And we do see a little bit from her friend's perspective. I just felt like she was never fully realized or developed as a character. And also some other characters that seem to be like a big deal in the synopsis, really, I don't think were a big deal. This is a pretty short book. So I guess maybe it just didn't have time for that. I didn't think they were as fleshed out as it seemed like they were going to be. So overall, I thought the idea of the story was interesting and I did, enjoy that I read it. It just felt a little too underdeveloped for me. Next I read Rebel by Beverly Jenkins. This is the first book in the Woman Who Dare series, which I believe is going to be like a companion series following like different women in historical fiction. Beverly Jenkins is, I think, a very famous like romance author. So yeah, this is my first book by her and I really enjoyed it. This follows Valinda Lacey, who moves to New Orleans from New York in order to teach during like Reconstruction era America. And so we follow her as she's meeting people, trying to get her school together. She meets a man named Captain Drake Levesque who actually saves her from a terrible situation. And so we follow both of them as they're going through this. It's a romance, so you can see something that happens. And I really enjoyed the story. I'm not really one for super heavy adult romance, but I enjoyed this one a lot. I was a little worried about the steamy, sexy times, whatever, but I don't think that this was too heavy-handed in my opinion. For me personally, I appreciate scenes like that more after a relationship has been established and that is when most of those scenes occur. I also really liked how the setting of the story was incorporated. Even though this is a romance, I did feel like the rest of the story, like Valinda's journey to getting a school for her students felt like an equally important part of the story. Other things happened with the other characters that I also felt like were important and treated with importance. I'm glad that the racism that the characters would have experienced if they were like real people during that time wasn't glossed over, but I also liked that it wasn't the main part of the story and we were able to focus on other things. Overall, I really enjoyed this. If you're looking for historical romance, this could be it, this could be for you. Next time I'm looking for a historical romance, I will definitely go to Beverly Jenkins. I might read the second book in the series whenever it comes out. I Wanna Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. This follows Chloe who goes on a road trip so she can go to an audition for the dance conservatory of her dreams after her mom forbids her from auditioning. But as she's about to leave, her annoying neighbor comes out and sees her about to leave and basically forces himself into the car so that he can go with her. That sounds worse than it is. It's not like that kind of force. It's a cute YA romance. So I would give this a trigger warning for parental death. We don't see anybody die, but her dad has passed away before the events of this book. And we do see a little bit of her dealing with that. I gave this four stars. I was bound to enjoy this. A book about a black ballerina is everything that I love and more. And it features a fun road trip with a cute little love interest. I was bound to enjoy it. As a former dancer, I used to dance in high school. And before that, I love stories about 
Girls Who Dance, and I love having those descriptions in the story. I enjoy Chloe as a character. I thought she was interesting and well-developed. I also enjoyed the other side characters as well, even though we don't see as much of them. Chloe's mom, for obvious reasons, was frustrating, but I felt like she was realistic. And the romance was fun to read. It is kind of a hate to love kind of thing, which I enjoyed. It's like friends to hate to love. I am always a fan of Hate to Love and I also appreciated that in my opinion I don't think their hate was unfounded at least on Chloe's side. It's not really hate but I also appreciated how the love interest wasn't just a vehicle to be a love interest. He also had his own things going on and we also dealt with that within the story. So overall if you want a fun road trip story with a little bit of heart and also some ballet I would recommend this. My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyekin Braceway. This follows Torede, who is bitter about her younger sister Ayula, who's the prettier and the favorite in her family, and she might also be a serial killer. This starts off after Ayula calls her sister for the third time to clean up after a boyfriend who she's killed. The first two times, Corde could write them off as accidents, um, the guy deserved it, but the third time, she's kind of like, what's going on here? Things really ramp up after the doctor that Corde works under that she also has a crush on, shows interest in Ayula, and she doesn't want Ayula to kill her, him, basically. This is really, really interesting, really weird. I liked it. I gave it four stars. <laughs> Definitely think this is not for everyone because this is just more of an exploration than anything. It has no real concrete plot. There's nothing that gets solved at the end. It's not really a mystery either. And the characters don't even really grow or learn a lesson in particular. It's just some characters living life for like a set period of time and we see things that happen in them. I did enjoy one thing that was like explored was like sibling relationships. Corday as the older sister feels like a heavy responsibility towards her sister and everyone also pushes it upon her as well. You can see in the story her mom expects her to do things for her sister because her sister's younger. Like her sister would never have to do those things for her older sister even though they're both adults. Yeah, I appreciated that exploration of a sibling dynamic. I am a younger sibling, so I can't really relate, but I'm sure other people who have younger siblings maybe could, maybe not to this extent. I hope your siblings aren't killing their boyfriends or girlfriends or they friends. But yeah, I enjoyed this, not for everyone. Pet by Akweke and Mezi. I gave this four stars. This follows a girl named Jam who lives in the city of Lucille. Lucille is a utopian society where there aren't any monsters, or at least that's what everyone tells Jam, even after a creature called Pet comes out of one of her mother's paintings and says that he's there to get rid of the monster that is in Lucille. Jam has to deal with the monster because she's the one who brought it out and we follow that. I think there is a trigger warning for this book. There's nothing graphic in it, but I think that this trigger warning in particular could be seen in the spoiler, so it's in the description. This is a strange little book. It read almost fairy tale like to me, which could be because I did listen to the audiobook of this, and the narrator just has kind of one of those voices that sounds like kind of like a bedtime story, but I also thought that the way it was written also lent itself to that. I enjoyed the representation the story offered. The main character is a black trans girl who deals with selective mutism and she communicates with sign language most of the time. I appreciated seeing how seamlessly in her life was normalized within the story. Her parents don't like complain about using sign language or anything. They're not like use your words or anything. Like they just sign with her. Her best friend learned sign language and the this acceptance of her like extends to even her best friend's family where some of them learn sign language so that they can communicate with her. I did love the idea of the utopia and how it's portrayed to us as readers. Um, and I did appreciate the message overall about how we don't know what a monster looks like no matter what. And also we can't get complacent about things because we never know when a monster will show up. Hunger, A Memoir of My Body by Roxanne Gay. This has trigger warnings for rape, fat phobia, and eating disorders. And I gave it four stars. This is Roxanne Gay's memoir and it specifically focuses on her feelings about her body. She is a very fat woman. She says in the book that she used to weigh 600 pounds, but she weighs less than that now, but she's still considered morbidly obese. So she's very big, is her point. And so it's about living in this body, how she got to have this body and just all her feelings. I really like this. I'm glad I read it. I thought it was well done because Roxanne Gay is a good writer. Who knew? 
I'm the first person to discover this. Her simple yet poignant writing style made it really easy to get through even though the subject matter is not easy to get through just because it does deal with, like I said in the trigger warnings, rape and just other hard subjects of uh, being in toxic relationships. She spent some time talking about that and I appreciated how honest Roxane Gay was. In this book, she discusses very personal matters which I appreciated and she even includes thoughts about her family that I would be not scared to mention but she says very honest things about her family and how they perceive her how they treat her even though she does have a good relationship with them i've been following her on twitter for a while um and i've read other like essays and things she's done and most of this didn't really surprise me but i can see how this would open people's eyes to certain things especially about being fat and how society treats fat people as a skinny person, obviously, I don't have first-hand experience to that, but I imagine it can be very validating to see this written in a book if you were a fat person or are a fat person. Just knowing that other people can commiserate, I think, is good in here. And yeah, I really liked it. I would recommend it. You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to Explain by Phoebe Robinson. Phoebe Robinson is a black comedian, and the book is kind of her memoir kind of book thing about her living life as a black woman and stuff. I gave this book three stars. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just okay. I am not sure I was the correct audience for this. Based on the title, it could have been written for white people, I guess, but also a lot of the references she makes seems to be for black people, but all the things she's saying are things black people know. So I don't know who it's for really. She's a comedian, but I didn't really laugh, so yeah, it was just fine. I thought the writing was fine. I just didn't think it was that funny. And I don't know, it just didn't, didn't work for me. I'm not really sure why. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If, if you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make more videos where I talk about books. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post another video. Follow me on my social media. I have Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.